Now I've taken my board to where I have my monitor so I can finally test it. Actually we've seen the running light so we know the components are actually working, a program is running, but of course you'd like to do something useful with it. First of all we're going to put it in its casing. The casing consists of two parts. You just take off the lid and the PCB falls into the bottom part like so. There's no screws, no gluing, just slide it in and when you put the lid on it will stay in place. There are plastic rubber feet supplied with the kit that you can use to glue under the box. So if you are afraid it will scratch just use four of these on the bottom. Of course this is totally up to you. We have supplied eight of those. If you like you can attach four more to the bottom of the PCB. But it's not necessary. Only apply those if the position of the PCB is still okay if you apply these rubber feet. Because there's holes in the back that we use to uh, plug the connectors um, to the connectors and the height is of course uh, of importance. Now let us see if our board produces VGA output. So on the back we have four connections. One is for power. One is for sound, so this is a standard 3.5 inch jack plug, you could use a mono or a stereo one and hook it up to your monitor or a separate amplifier as I've done in this case or just a separate pair of speakers that will also work. So that's connected. We have the VGA monitor that needs to be connected. And we already see that our board is doing something, so we've built a working board. All right. If you don't have a VGA monitor, you could buy a VGA to HDMI converter to hook it up to your HDMI monitor. Now in our experience, if you buy these converter kits, uh, it might be the case that some parts of the screen, the sides, will fall off and will not be visible. So preferably use a standard VGA monitor. And the last thing to connect is the serial controller that's included. There is only one controller port. There's also one controller included. It might say one, it might say two on the top. Those are all the same. And we can use this now to play a game or do something else on the computer. So the software you're now seeing is stored in the EEPROM that was given to you as part of the kit. So it might look slightly different depending on which version of the ROM you have. This is ROM version 1.0. So you can use the buttons on the left to scroll through the menu. And let me just quickly take you through the options here. We have two games, Snake and Racer. Uh, with this button, button A, you can select the program. So this will play a racer game. And we also have sound with it. This button is to accelerate. And we can go left and right. And if you touch the sides of the road, it's game over. In all these games, what we've built in is that if you press start for a longer time, the system will go back to the main menu. Snake is the other game. So here you're a snake that needs to eat dots. And you cannot eat yourself or the sides of the screen or dots you've already taken. Now I can also use this game to show you that we are now in retro mode. 
so of each scan line, uh, for each line, there is a, a black line drawn to give you the retro effect. Now, if you press select, all the lines will be drawn, but this requires a little bit more of processing power. So for this game, it doesn't really matter, but in Racer, you will see it does matter. Pressing select again, we'll go back to the retro mode. And again, a long press on start will get us back into the menu. So we also have a Mendel Bro that will be drawn on the screen. We have some pictures and we have a list of credits. And we have a loader. So because the software is in the EEPROM, it's not really easy to change the software. It's possible. And I will show you in a different video how to actually program the Gigatron, make your own programs and burn them into an EEPROM. For this you will need additional hardware. But we've also built in a loader that will allow you to use the same uh, port that's used by the game controller to attach external hardware, an Arduino system, to upload games or other programs into RAM and run it from there. So at the moment I'm making this video, uh, the external hardware is not yet available for sale, but this will be available in the near future. So we reconnect the controller, long press on start, gets us back to the main menu. So that is it. Thank you for watching this instruction video and thanks for your interest again in Gigatron. I hope you've been successful in building your own Gigatron microcomputer and I wish you a lot of uh, fun playing around with it.